Hello, everybody out there. We are hosting live from uh, San Francisco, Adobe Live with Rosina. Hello. And just want to welcome everybody in the chat. Where are you guys from? Uh, shout, shout out your location. Uh, can you believe that holidays are right around the corner? It's very and depressing. food is on the mind. <laughs> yes, it so, is. It's uh, always on the mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. We, I live to eat. I don't know about you. I do. Uh, so we are going to be talking about a case study and uh, basically the, the start to finish process of what it takes to make a product and, a, and in what fashion you want to present that in. And we have the best person to do that with such an experience in this field. So thank you. We're lucky to have, I'm lucky to be a host. Um, so, and don't forget today that we have uh, the chat and win in 30 minutes. So um, when that time comes, I'll let, you, I'll let you know. We have some really cool stuff for you there. Um, and also uh, we have the creative challenge um, that's going to happen later. So we want to make sure that um, we're going to give feedback to people that had submitted designs for the creative challenge. So um, if you like to hear the feedback, just kind of stay tuned and we'll go over some feedback. And I would love to, to bring you in that too, to see like what yeah, some of these designers are doing. For sure. uh, and with the, the new features available for XD, um, we have, we just had Max. So now we have all these new features, we have states and we're just, we're, we're ready to rock and roll with people and what they could do. Cause I know Andrea Hawk has been doing some great things there. Um, so everybody is, in the chat is, is kind of joining in slowly. Hi, Michael, um, Jack from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, we have people from all over the place, so we're just we can't wait for you guys to, to come in here. Um, and also, just to, so so you know, um, we would love to hear your feedback on what you like about Adobe Live, um, what makes you a better designer. So take our survey; um, it's at the uh, above your chat. You'll see it, and you could just click there. And um, by doing that, you get a chance to win a year subscription to the Creative Cloud, so you can just create more awesome stuff with the products you love. So whether it's Photoshop, whether it's Illustrator, uh, hopefully it's XD. <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's XD. Um, but we're, we just want to hear what you have to say. So um, additionally, like we, we'd like to go over the creative crowd challenges and what, you're, uh, what we're kind of looking at as far as what people are making. Um, today, we have the emoji reactions um, that Andrea Hawk has been um, putting together for, for us. And we also then have the asset management from yesterday um, that is a, another challenge for us to look at. Most likely the designs that we'll be reviewing are from that, um, but there might be some people that are fast and have created some experiences with emoji reactions. How you communicate with emojis is the future of communication. Uh, I feel that people communicate more with emojis than they do with actually actual words. I find that it's hard not to communicate with emojis personally. I get them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, like the, the praying hands, like it's oh, not. Oh, I use it as thank you. It, it's, I know, but it's pray. It's a high five. Praying hands? It's a no, high five. No, there's a high five one. There's a separate it's, one. It's too high. It's but a, I don't know why <laughs> this is thank you. I mean. I don't know. It's it's yeah. it's a it's a cultural uh, you know so. sprout. So yes. we'll see we'll see where this goes with our <laughs> uh, emoji reactions. Um, so I think without further ado, I'd just like to welcome Rosina and uh, talk about what you're doing today. And I, we just can't wait to to hear what you got. Thank you guys so yeah. much. I'm super excited to be here. Hello, everybody. Um, so my name is Rosina. I, uh, I just want to give you a little bit of background on myself, um, where I came from, who I am as a designer, so that you uh, feel like you know me a little bit better. So I started my career in New York City. I uh, worked there and lived there for about 10, 12 years. I'm dating myself there a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so throughout New York, I worked at many different um, organizations, startups and larger companies alike, but always with, um, always on a product, on a product team. So I've been a product designer, UI UX designer, which in my mind fits into the product designer kind of role, and then a user researcher as well. And now I live in Boulder, Colorado. Um, I moved to Boulder two years ago just to, you know, get a change of scenery, let my dog run around, um, Ooh, kind of frolic on the mountains. I have a fluffy little American Eskimo who has a very loud bark, but when he's not barking, he's adorable. <laughs> Does he shed a lot? <laughs> no, he doesn't. Oh, and he like, has self-cleaning fur, so <laughs> it's that's, kind of... That's high tech. Yes, it is, he's a very <laughs> high tech dog. <laughs> Hi, Hartley, if you're watching. <laughs> Um, so now that I'm in Boulder, I am also all of these things plus a business owner. And that's what I am super excited about to share with you guys today. 
So I started my company, Flatirons Development, um, about a year and a half ago. We are a product design and development company. So we have, we're co-located. We have a team in Columbia. Those are some of our Columbia guys. And then um, I co-founded this company with my partner and fiance. Oh, cool. Yeah. So go follow us on LinkedIn and check out our website, which is currently being updated. So maybe check it out like on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and what do we do at Flatirons Development? We build products. We love building products. We work with um, founders of typically early stage companies, mm. usually founders in like the seed stage or series A stage of their fundraising. And we help them either bring their idea to life, to fruition, or we take something that has, you know, take their MVP that has been built and help them bring it to the next level. And there is nothing we are more passionate about. Um, so it, with Flatirons, we do product design, product strategy, user research, and web and mobile development. Right, it's all about saving that communication with trying to get people on board with these, these new ideas and showing context with design to just like, bring to life these ideas that you have, right? Absolutely, and it's incredible how much design can impact um, the success of your mm -hmm. product. So many of our um, clients would come to us with an entire product built, uh, built by engineers, never had mm -hmm. a designer, because sometimes design is, is always thought of like, oh, we can kind of figure out the design on our own. Mm -hmm. on our own. Right. Um, and then they come and say, we have no users. <laughs> right. And so that's when we come in and we actually get to know their users, get to know mm -hmm. the user's problems, and really help inform the product decisions that they make based on the right. insights we get from the users. And, and that could be a good thing and a bad thing if you think about like a does, an engineered product mm -hmm. where it might be building features that might not be relevant. Completely. Right, because the user base might not use the way use the technology the way you think. Completely. And sometimes you're able to then use the technology that's built and redesign it, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but I think by having this type of work to redesign does give you a lot of power to then showcase like what you can do, and especially if in the, ser the software as a service, yeah, um, you're able to then have a large body of work that you can kind of carry over and like learn from other projects, right? And then I, I, I love the idea to like redesign engineered things mm -hmm. because there's already like a mental model that you have something totally. to work with. Right. And that's great. Yeah, yeah. And most of, most of our clients do already have something built. And so there's a framework there and we can kind of, um, you know, isolate the areas that we want to improve mm -hmm. upon or, you know, think about strategically yeah. how to attack it as a whole. I mean, as opposed to just saying you have to rebuild everything. That's not really um, a constructive way no. to improve a product. I love it. Yeah. So it's it's exciting. It's com it's so, so rewarding. Um, and, and that's what we do. So the reason I am here today, or what I would love to do with you guys, is build a product with you. Um, building products is my passion. Um, thinking about product strategy and uh, thinking about how to solve a problem and how to bring that kind of product to market. Um, that's kind of what I'm obsessed with. So I thought we would do something together. Every product starts with a um, kind of user or a problem. So let's get into it. Me, I love cooking. I am by no means, you know, an expert chef, but I am a home cook. Yeah. Um, cooking is my passion. It is my way to relax mm -hmm. after sitting at my desk and my computer all day, to use my mind in a different way. Um, it's the best. Who else in this chat loves cooking? I love cooking. <laughs> I, and I, we would love some of like your favorite dishes that you'd like to cook. Yes. And I think we all have our go-tos. Like, um, you know, when I was in my 20-somethings, definitely like r ramen was like the only <laughs> thing I knew how to cook and like eggs, maybe. Right, right. But you know, as you as you kind of like develop a palate of some sort, mm -hmm. you start learning new things that you can cook quickly. Yes. And that's the exciting part about, uh, about having like a, a palate to cook for totally. is that you can explore new flavors and that 
right there looks incredible. Like, and we haven't eaten yet, so yeah. thank you for putting I know, putting right? <laughs> I know, seriously. So what's your, some of your favorite things to eat in the chat? We'd love to kind of see, see what you have, what you make. Um, Ooh, custom pizza in your pizza oven. I want a pizza oven. Yeah, that's, that's my John, goal is to yeah. have like a stone oven. Yes. That you could just get really hot. Yeah, something maybe outdoors. I know some oh, people yeah. have an outdoor pizza oh, oven. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah, that's like goals. Would be amazing. I do have a recipe for a, a bread that I make, and it it has like some extra dough mm -hmm. that it, you can make pizzas with, or like focaccia. Right. And so I've I've kind of carved my lane as like this little that's like nice. pizza yeah pizza shop for my friends that come over and have some like <sighs> skillet. Pizza. I love that. It's my it's my stuff. See, the thing is, I need I need like a family with ten kids so that I can have an excuse to cook for everybody. Oh. My fiance um, <laughs> is always on some kind of carb free diet, <laughs> so I can never make the pizzas oh. or the focaccia because I'd be the only one eating it, yeah. and then it would just go bad. Well, so it sounds like you're, you should to, be a restaurateur. Yeah, as well. maybe I go. should. <laughs> maybe I should. And on that ramen comment, my version of ramen was Kraft mac and cheese, which hey. to this day. You can't knock Annie's can't. mac and cheese no, no, on, you know, no. what, a day when you're sick and you can't really think well, about anything else to make. There is always mac and cheese in my refrigerator yes. because I have a four-year-old. Yes. Oh. And that's how I speak her language is make her mac and cheese. So I, I could easily eat off of cheese. the kid's menu props any day. Annie's. Yeah. Mac and cheese, grilled cheese, and chicken fingers. <laughs> I mean, just give me a kid's menu and I'm good to go. Velveeta shells for you in college, Francisco. Uh. <laughs> nice. Yeah, there you go. So anyway, um, I love cooking and I have a serious problem. I've had this problem for probably 10 years now and I am using this platform as a way to try to solve this problem. Yeah. Um, so my problem is this. I have so many different sources of recipes. I have a ton of cookbooks, which I'm obsessed with. I have magazines. I subscribe to like five different cooking magazines. I get them every month. It's my favorite time of the month when they, they come in the mail and I can just like tear out all my favorite recipes. I have so many bookmarks of other recipes that I follow, blogs that I follow, um, you know, if just, you know, for that, for that one day when I want to make a um, buffalo chicken dip for the Super uh -huh. Bowl party that I go to maybe once every 15 years, um, I need to know where that is. My Instagram feed yeah. <laughs> is full of recipes. All I do is Same. save recipes, but I have nowhere to put them all. Um, every time I go to think about a recipe that I want to make, I have to think about where it was, how to find it again, uh, and it's just a complete mess. Yeah, I'm, I've suffered. I've, we talked about this. I suffer yeah. from a similar, very, very hard problem. Yeah, you were saying just yesterday you were looking for a recipe. Looking for my chicken, my chicken nugget recipe. I couldn't find it. Yeah. And it was in my text thread with my <laughs> wife. Yeah. Honestly, does anyone else have this problem? Because I feel like this is something that I've kind of been wrestling with for my adult life, but yeah. I, I feel like sometimes I'm the only one who has. So I'm curious, anyone in the chat has had this problem before. Any cooks out there? Any cooks, cooks out there? What do you do? <laughs> Please shed some shed some um, advice on me. But today we are going to resolve this problem. We are going to make a recipe organization website that allows users to easily save their favorite recipes all in one place. Mm -hmm. How does this sound? Um, this... I'm down. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, and Jesse D, his Velveeta, <laughs> Velveeta shells with chicken, baby carrots, broccoli was his big meal. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah. I can see that. Oh, someone said fat had pizza. Oh, <laughs> that's my fiance, Mike. There you go. <laughs> I was going to say, Is that's, that, that's, that's a the one. Pleasure? That's the, that's it's the a keto version oh. of pizza where it's basically you make the pizza crust out of eggs and cream cheese and I think Parmesan cheese because keto, the keto diet is all about high fat. Right. No sugar. No sugar. So it's something personally I would find disgusting, but hey. you, we would make it, so. You don't knock yeah. it until you try it though, right? <laughs> I have tried it. Oh, now you can knock it, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> awesome, so this is what we are gonna do today. Um, so day one, today we're gonna talk about, I wanna, I wanna approach this as if a client had come to us and said that this is what they wanna build. Um, so what we would be doing next is looking at our target audience. 
we would be writing some user stories and user flows for how somebody mm -hmm. comes in and interacts with the different features. We're gonna look at a feature alignment for um, MVP versus a post MVP. So as most of you probably know, you can't just throw every single feature into a product or mm -hmm. it'll never get launched. Yeah. Or by the time it does get launched, there may be a competitor already out there doing the same thing. So you really have to think incrementally about how you want to approach this. Um, and then we're going to wireframe and maybe prototype if we have time. And these are frameworks that can be applied to any type of product that you develop. Every single one, yes. Mm -hmm. Every single product starts with this kind of framework. Right, and those like you know user stories, user flows, they might vary slightly depending on the type of project that you're working on. Absolutely. But they're still going to be part of your process. And Absolutely, yeah. The larger the product, you know, the larger some of these user flows and user stories right. can get. So I'm hoping we can keep something kind of small and containable right. for our recipe and org website. So your experience as a product designer and this is this is a topic for designers everywhere that I've met is like what what is your role and as and what what type of designer are you mm -hmm. but essentially if you are a product designer you're touching all points of the design process right yeah. you're starting with research you're doing all the UX all the interface design you're back to research completely back to user experience it's all a loop, right? Completely. Being able to touch all those points is very crucial to a development cycle, right? Yes, absolutely. And a lot of, I mean, I think there's kind of a wide debate around, you know, the difference between a UI UX designer versus a product designer. To me, product design is exactly that. It's mm -hmm. it's owning the entire journey mm -hmm. um, from the the strategy that goes into deciding right. how to solve the problem in the first place, validating right. that with users, right. coming back figuring out the MVP, working with product managers um, that kind of guide right. and shape, you know, how that MVP is going to be built, and then testing it, doing usability testing, and then mm -hmm. watching, watching, watching it in the real world, seeing how people are using it, watching the analytics, yeah. iterating constantly. Um, so it's, it's really that holistic ownership. Yeah, and, and a, being a product designer sometimes does take a little bit more time to like get into a role like that. Yes. Uh, sometimes being able to like specialize in UX is, or specialize in research or specialize in u user interface design can be like a great way to start your career. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but you know, over time you get good at all of the things mm -hmm. and then you're no longer just a specialist, but you're more of a generalist yeah. that can do all, all of it. Yeah, right? exactly. And, and in my experience, I, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a generalist. Mm -hmm. um, Especially when you're working for startups that have small teams, small resources, you have to be able to get in there and wear many hats, right. whether it's interviewing users or designing the UI. I mean, definitely play to your own strengths, but like there is really nothing wrong with being able to tackle the entire gamut. Yeah. And you always have to start somewhere, like you said. Mm -hmm. I started with visual design. Mm -hmm. And um, graphic design. Graphic design, right? yeah. yeah. Graphic design, as as they for print, called it back in the day. Print for design. Print. There you mm -hmm. go. I mean, that that's what it was. Yeah. So I was designing it, business cards. And then, without knowing it, you started doing user experience design before user experience design was a thing. Yeah. When I was, I went to grad school for design entrepreneurship, and that was the year that the iPad came out. <laughs> what school was that? School of Visual Arts oh, in New York City. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, what it was experience. incredible. It was incredible. Would you would you recommend a school like that for the people that are in the chat? In a second, yeah. yes. The my grad school program changed my career trajectory hands down. Um, it just enabled me to think think actually like a product designer and not like a visual designer. You know, they mm -hmm. didn't focus on typography or spacing. They kind of assumed that you had that foundation. Yeah, yeah. And it was more about how do you solve a problem for an audience? Right. And, and how do you sell that? What are problems? What right? are problems? Framing, like, I think for me when I was in, in school, it was like, how to come up with a value proposition for what you were trying to solve was like mm -hmm. the hardest thing to do. Oh my God, It's yeah. like, you gotta make it a certain amount of characters long, make it quickly understandable. Right. For some reason, words are hard when you're trying to <laughs> solve a problem for them. And it's true, like, but once you get your value, value prop down, mm -hmm. everything kind of falls into place. And, yeah. and that's because you've done all the process to get there. Yes, yeah, yeah. definitely. My, so the framework, apply it. If you're new into the field, um, use these as a template to like know how do you attack a problem. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's just what we're gonna do today. Yes, we are Amazing. gonna do this today, momentarily. 
Let's get um, in it. Tomorrow, we are going to get into some higher fidelity designs, uh, prototyping, and then if we have time, we'll be adding some more features and functionality. But let's see how we do. And we have a, a comment from Gretchen Young. You, mastering Venezuelan patacón. Ooh. So, Plantain, Plantain sandwich. sandwich. So this is this is very near and dear to my heart. So um, Caribbean descent as well here. So I uh, uh, we have something that's a, um, a sandwich that is made out of plantains mm -hmm. with steak in the middle. Uh, uh, it, Puerto Ricans eat it. I'm from Panama, so we we also Very have plantains. Cool. So Gretchen, I speak your language, and I would love to have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, plantain sandwich. We're talking about holiday food, right? And yeah. what does that mean? And we'll get into that question a little bit later on what people eat for holidays. Yeah. Uh, but it's very cultural. Right. It's very the specific on your culture and where you come from. Right. Um, but we'll learn more of that later. But yeah. We're going to get into some like highlights on day two right now. Definitely, definitely. And I just want to give a shout out to Arlie, who is um, saying hello from Barranquilla, Colombia, which is where our team in Colombia is based. Hello, Arlie. Thank you for joining. Oh. <laughs> See, and, and Colombia has their own food, right? Oh, like, yeah. Sanco I'm excited. Sancocho is the, the soup of Colombia, which really? is neighbors to Panama. So there's very simil mm. similar food between Panamanians and Colombians. Nice. So shouts out to uh, Arlie out there. Nice. I am. Um, Mike and I are going to Colombia to visit our team in January. So I'm very excited to try all the are food. Are you going to go to Cartagena? We might. We might it's if like, we have a chance. It's beautiful. It's, I think it's two hours in Barranquilla. It's so a, we'll, that's a little far. far a little, little bit. further. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be able to squeeze it in. Yeah. I've heard it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Well, it's like very like Spaniard influences. Mm -hmm. So it's got like the, the <sighs> really ornate architecture. So Amazing. it's one of those places like you have to take photos and it's just beautiful. Mike, did you hear that? Yes. <laughs> Mike, put it on your itinerary. <laughs> take, awesome. Take it with you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Great. Well, I think we can get started. Let's do it. Who's ex who's excited? I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> I, and just to just to remind the folks out there, seven minutes until we have the chat and win. Um, and I'll and I'll give you a little heads up when that happens, so that way we can get into uh, putting some chats in there, so you can get some cool stuff. Nice. So Edgardo is uh, on our team as well, and he's saying that Cartagena is touristy, which is what the locals say. It apparently, is. But. It is. Tourist traps are a real thing. <laughs> yeah, but New York City's touristy too. Oh, so yeah. you know, Manhattan is is. A There's whole, still a reason to go. Yeah, <laughs> and walk definitely walk the Brooklyn Bridge, right? Yeah. Do it? Yes or no? Have I done it? Have you? Maybe on like a charity walk. I think okay. I have. Okay. Not not, not for, taking a stroll. Okay. No. I, I actually got halfway. I got tired. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it was like when I went, it was like super hot. Like, okay. Oh, so, like, hold on, this is yeah, too much. You gotta go on a cooler day. Or <laughs> something. I forgot my water bottle. <laughs> Um, awesome. So the first thing that I usually think about when when I'm I'm looking for when we're starting a new product is the target audience. So with a target audience, you think about who they are. Um, this is a whole area of research into it and of itself. Um, so I am taking a very cursory approach here. Who is our target audience for our recipe organization site? They are home cooks. I'm saying ages 18 to 65 plus um, because I don't really see 15 year olds needing um, a way to organize their recipes. Right. Although if if you are, you know, by all means. Right. Um, and they're tech savvy because they obviously need have a need to use a computer or technology in order to, to make this easier for them. Right. Um, but that's about all the demographics I would break down right there. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's there's many more ways that we can slice and dice it, but this is a basic way to think about it. And then you also think about the tools they use for finding recipes. So what are people currently doing? So we know that they're looking at cookbooks, they're looking at magazines, blogs, cooking sites like Epicurious, Food Network, Instagram, Pinterest. What are some other ways that you guys are finding recipes? Um, shout it out if you if you have any other ideas that uh, that I haven't mentioned. I feel like the just like the hand me down recipes yeah. from family. Well, those are the best. Yeah, and like they're hard to come by these days. But like they're they're how do you encapsulate those two is something that I've always tried tried to do is yeah. like digging into connecting to my culture through food is very important. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe I might not be able to get it directly from my grandma because right. she didn't have the internet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I can still like research it and like kind of play around with recipes of oh, my definitely. cultural makeup. And that's, mm -hmm. I think that's that's the great thing about being able to like aggregate is like making it, making it your own. Yeah. Because that you can take a recipe, but a lot of times maybe you might make it the way the recipe says to do it that point in time, mm -hmm. but you might not have something. So how do you substitute? Right. All that stuff is like 
I, I've been finding myself using Instagram a lot more for cooking than I ever thought I would ever. Really? Which is really strange to me, but it is reality. They're so, it, it fills up my entire feed as good. It's so visual, right? It is. And it's like, you you need, like when I'm looking at, the thing that like blogs for the, for food is like, that whole build up and like story around it, like I, I know, I, scroll, I, scroll. I love people doing that. That I love that they take the time to do that. Yeah. But I never read it. Me neither. I, I just go right to the recipe. Like I'm sorry. Like I, I love your stories. I do. I'm sure. a storyteller. Right. And I, I would probably do the same thing, and right. people won't read them. Right. But hey, it's part of the it's part <laughs> of the process, right? Exactly. Exactly. I love these these uh, these different sources, though. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So once we kind of frame who our target audience is and what are they currently doing, um, we start to think about user stories. So again, in the chat, I'm curious if anyone has familiarity using nice. user stories Love before. This. So this is something that I would typically do with a product manager and the, a development team. Mm -hmm. And you basically use this framework to justify every feature that you're going to be including in a product. Um, so you basically say, as a blank, which is user type, I need blank functionality so that I can achieve a user need. Hmm. And, you know, because if we said we wanted the ability to um, change the color of different recipe photos in our app, you know, a developer would say, why? Why do you need to do right. this? That's, you know, X what's amount the, of days of work. Use case? Right, exactly. And if you don't have a good reason, um, you know, there's there's no justification for building that feature. So we're going to walk through a few user stories. So the first one for this app is going to be around saving a recipe. Mm. So as a home cook, I need a quick and easy way to save recipes that catch my eye, whether it's from a website, magazine, cookbook, etc., so that I can refer back to them later. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Um, and here's a, a little user flow that I made about saving a recipe. So basically, user finds the recipe they want to save. They go to a, rep a recipe tool. They can do three things. They can copy the URL to the website. Mm -hmm. They can upload a photo. So if you have a cookbook or a family recipe and you just want to snap a photo of it. Um, or they can copy and paste the text directly. So maybe they're online, they want to copy it and then paste it so they can have some nice formatting. So three ways that we're gonna let users upload or save a recipe. And then the recipe is saved. Voila. Um, the next user story is around cataloging a recipe. So now that we have all these recipes, how do we find them? Um, so as a home cook, I need a way to catalog my recipes based on meal, ingredients, dietary restrictions, etc., mm -hmm. so that I can easily find them later. And so here with catalog cataloging a recipe, again, a little user flow that you save a recipe in our tool. You can name it, you apply tags based on, um, you know, meal, ingredient, et cetera. And maybe add a note to the recipe, like I usually double the amount of salt in right. here. Um, and I love how these user flows are kind of now generating possible features, right? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what happens. You, do you never, you really try not to start with design. You try to start with the user flows right. and, the, and the user need right. and let that inform the design. Yeah, and so uh, what's up, uh, Cornelian? Uh, happy hump day, definitely. It's Wednesday already. Um, and we have the chat and win happening in any moment. So um, just wanted to leave you with a question for generating some ideas for this chat and win. What is your favorite feature that XD has pushed out with this latest release. Ooh, that's a good Cause one. Because we, we have done some things to address uh, a lot of the what people want. So I, I just want to know what you guys like. So uh, take some time and um, chat now. Chat go now. In, go in it. and Or talk about what kind of food you like. Something. We, we just want to so hear. So do they chat in this chat? Yeah, they're, they're doing it. And, oh. And, yeah, so we're, we're just going to be continue to talk about like food. Oh, so, okay. So like, I don't know. And we're back. we're back. So so keep chatting because we want to hear more about what kind of food you like. Uh, we want to know about your features in XD. Hover states is 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 probably the oh I just heard about that feature since sliced bread. We're gonna have um, to play with that. Yeah, because yeah. now you can have 
uh, states all smashed into one component, so you don't have to have all these uh, artboards right. that are kind of stacked on top of each other. Right. And as far as like prototyping, we know that the importance of prototyping is to communicate the, the what, what is the experience right. proposed and how fast can you get to that point without doing all this crazy code and doing all these like, do I have to use principle to like, Oh my you know, gosh. Do I, have to, yeah. do I have to use all these other it's like software? visceral to, reaction to that. To like have yeah. these like mm -hmm. high fidelity prototypes? Like, no, like, no. let's just do it quick and rapid. And right. the fastest you could do it's better, which is why Hover State is, for me, also my favorite. Yes. Uh, but now we have collaboration, live <laughs> collaboration. Look at that. I love this last comment. <laughs> Adobe Live is secretly a food show. It, it is. We're we're we're, we're the new food show. Yeah, yeah. We are, we are, uh, we're we're starting. Let's it. pivot. We, we're gonna pivot now for Adobe Live to be a cooking show. Congratulations, Norris Padmore. You are our winner. Woo! And I don't know if you even know what you won, but you won a thirty dollar digital gift card to Moo. Ooh, they're and good. And Moo is is the premier. Uh, card ordering software and service. So you can actually design all of your designs in XD um, to, the, to the sizes that you need and then upload them to Moo to make your business beautiful and, and hand out cards. And it's not an antiquated thing. You need to do it now. I, like, we actually use, <laughs> we use Moo for our business and I, I love them. Their they're experience so online is awesome. Yeah. Um, their quality is great. So their card stock free is free endorsement. Is, <laughs> seriously, I, I'm, I'm one of those like, Artifacts are very important. Yeah. And if you can leave people with something, oh, yeah. it's always going to be a, a great way for them to remember you. Mm -hmm. They might not like like store it the way you want them to. But it's okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, do you like, I like, have a jar full of business cards, like a restaurant? Yeah. No, I save nice ones. I save right. visually attractive ones. I save moo cards. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and we have design feedback happening uh, later on in the broadcast too. So uh, if you're interested in sticking around, we'd love it because we want to see more work from folks like you. Uh, if, if you're in this chat, maybe you contributed something and we'd love to uh, see what you made. Um, so the new cooking program is definitely going to be a thing. So yeah. we're going to make plantain sandwiches and uh, yeah. pizza. I some, should probably quit my job. Yeah. And so we'll just move to San Francisco. We'll, just, we'll make gluten-free, keto-friendly pizza. But we can also make <laughs> <laughs> we can also make regular pizza. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Let's do that. <laughs> great. Congrats, <laughs> Norris. Again, you're gonna you're gonna do great things with this uh, new representation of MOOC business cards. Awesome. So we're Enjoy back that. to user flows, okay. defining features, yeah, keeping it going. Yeah, so we just did, um, this is our second user flow about how do we catalog a recipe so we can find it later. Mm -hmm. um, and now the third user flow, third of, third of four, is finding a recipe, right? So we saved a recipe, then we um, cataloged it, and now on the other end, how do you find a recipe? Right. So as a home cook, to find I need to find recipes specific to the meal I plan to make or ingredients I have on hand so that I can choose the re best recipe for my meal needs. Pretty straightforward again. So a user flow for this is you wanna find a recipe, you come to our tool, you can search by keyword, you can search from the filters that were previously um, nice. tags that were applied to. You can sort the recipe results to view the most relevant, and then you can choose your recipe and start cooking. Mm -hmm. And I want to call out there is a, a, li a chat that came in yeah. for John Wynn. It was a favorite. I, I, it said live chat, mm -hmm. and I thought that was just like some something saying like live chat because you were in the chat. And you're, it's, but it's not. It's live chat. And it's now a feature in XD. Really? So if you're collaborating on your file, you can get live chat from people that are in your design file. That's because you can share it and then invite right. people. So now your it's team, really cool. your team out in Columbia, you can actually chat with them via. I love that Adobe. Uh, XD. And we can share files because uh, fi sharing fi sharing design files has always been a pain point. You can create it right in front of them. Yeah. And you can prototype with them. Amazing. So just keep that in mind when you're a team working remote. It's just a, a that live chat feature is Jeff. Thanks for calling that out. I thought it was some sort of comment that you're just throwing in the chat because it's a live chat. Sometimes yeah. people will be like, hey, thumbs up. Yeah. Get a chat out there. But that's actually a really great feature. Just yep. wanted to call that out. Awesome. Great. So, um, so we just covered three different user flows. I'm adding another one here because it's it's more of a. Um, it can be argued that it's not needed for an MVP, and by that I mean, in order to 
to release this product. You don't need this. You don't need this next feature, but I really want it. So we're gonna we're gonna look at it and we're gonna examine whether we're gonna include it in the MVP or not. And that is viewing groupings of recipes. So as a home cook, I need to view multiple recipes at once so that I can be prepared with everything I yes. need when starting to cook a meal. So this is like, sometimes I do like to kind of take my own approach. If I'm making, you know, lasagna, I might want to look at a couple different lasagna recipes at once and take little bits and pieces from each one mm. based on the ingredients I have on hand or based on my preferences. Yeah. Or let's say you're cooking a whole meal. You have, uh, you know, a, a meat dish, a vegetable dish, and a starch dish. Right. How, like, I don't want to keep moving around my tabs right. or flipping through books to find the, the specific recipe. Like, wouldn't it be great if they were all just right there for you? Right, streamlining. Yes. Right? We, we, we love streamlining here at XD. Yes, 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 yeah. yes you do. <laughs> it's all about streamlining. If you could streamline the working cooking process, right? just like the design process. Exactly. Cooking is kind of design, right? Yeah, oh, 100%. Art and, yes. and design in one thing. Yeah, it's creativity. It is, totally. It's an expression. It's edible creativity, yes. the best kind. Yes, the best kind. Um, and so I'm putting this in here because it's something I really want. If I were working in a startup right now or with a, with a team of developers and a PM, I would probably be fighting for this tool and probably have to go to users and prove that they wouldn't use this tool without this specific right. feature Fight in order it. to make the case to do it in an MVP. But Fight since this is a pretend world, <laughs> I want it. Everything's pretend. Everything's pretend. Until it's not. Yeah. So that's the thing about having these features is you can create it for V2. Yeah. Right? Yes, it's, exactly. It can be on the menu. It will be V2, yes. And we will be doing it for V2. Yeah. That's right. And that's and that's I feel like that's the great thing about thinking blue sky. Mm -hmm. Is it's I I actually re always think about blue sky to begin with. Mm -hmm. And anything and yes. everything that you could think of, throw it out there and get it all documented yep. because that could be part of your next step. Yep. You might not make the cut for, for your MVP, keeping it lean, keeping it something that you can make to prove. Right. But if then you're proved, then you can throw it in later. Exactly, and I'm really glad you bring that up because in, in one minute, I'm gonna be talking about um, what our post MVP vision is mm. and how I can never or rarely ever or preferably not build a product without knowing what the business vision is. Right. Um, because you don't want to be designing some kind of, you know, website architecture that can't grow um, based on where the business intends right. to take it. Right. You don't want to have to start over again. So you mm -hmm. have to always start with that broader vision. Yeah. No, I agree. You have to, to kind of keep scale in mind. Like, don't fixate on it yeah. to, to a point where you get paralyzed by it. Yeah. But you have to think about like what's our next step, and right. always have like a next step to go to. Exactly. Right? And how are you measuring? Exactly. Oh yes, for sure. Um, I'm throwing in a lot of puns. I don't know if you've if you measuring. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. I, that went over my head, okay. but now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so the user flow for viewing groupings of recipes is a user wants to find a, res a recipe or several recipes by theme. I probably wrote this late at night. Um, they search for a recipe by keyword, mm -hmm. they filter, whatever, they find their recipes, they select multiple recipes to view together, and they review recipe in some kind of um, collection mm -hmm. view mode. Love it. Okay. So we just reviewed um, four, three main features and one extra feature that are going to be in our MVP. And really what the goal of an MVP in, is in general um, at least in our approach, is to ensure usability. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure in this MVP that people know how to use a product. If, if I give this website to my mom or my dad who, you know, they're okay tech savvy, but not yeah. like pros, um, I want to make sure they know how to use it. Right. It's got to yeah. be accessible. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Accessibility for mm -hmm. sure. Um, so we need to make sure that people know how to use it. Is it intuitive? And then the other goal, if you were actually intending to bring this to market and monetize it, is to validate product market fit, which is, will people actually use this? How many people in the chat know about product market fit? It's, it's like, you know, probably the um, very few products, I think, it's one of the reasons why 
many products fail is because they don't have product market fit, right. which is, do you have enough of an audience that needs your product so right. badly um, that they'll use it? Yeah, and I, for this, I, I always think about um, the lean process mm -hmm. um, and thinking about um, definitely understanding the size of the market um, and potentially like what is your toehold in a market yeah like where can you start exactly and, and do you have like a plan to possibly get to the next step right and then possibly get to the next step which is like domination right right exactly and, and but like determining that toehold is is it's it's paramount like if you don't have that understood if you don't know who that market is and, mm -hmm. and the prof the potential profitability yeah. then it's kind of like a maybe wasting your time. Exactly, exactly. Gotcha. Um, especially if you were gonna be taking this pitch to investors, you would have to have a slide about how large of a market opportunity this is. Right. So, you know, the recipe ecosystem, I think, has huge opportunities. But for our product, it might be a little niche, which is why right. I don't have a company that sells this recipe tool And yet. to the folks that might not be familiar, uh, the, the KPI, yeah. what, what is uh, a KPI and how does it impact the, our, um, our product market? A great question. So a KPI stands for Key Performance Indicator. So every everything you do in building your product has to be measured. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have to measure the success of it um, in order to know if we're doing well. Yes. So for, for the MVP, the key performance indicator would be um, retention, which is, so it's how do we make sure that we are, we are building a product that people wanna use, mm -hmm. we're gonna use retention as a way to measure that. Yeah, there you go. And retention is how many people are coming back. Right. Um, how many people, so we're gonna be measuring this by number of recipes added mm -hmm. and accessed right. on our site so that we can say to investors, we have been, you know, we have been released for two months and we already have 350,000 recipes saved on our site. That is a huge indicator that we have product market fit yeah. because we have people coming back over and over again to save more recipes. And building in analytics is crucial for that, right? Absolutely. And our development team, I mean, that is one of our biggest... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, value value adds is we always build analytics into the platform right. from the very beginning um, because you have to be measuring. You have to yeah. be measuring everything. Right. Don't totally, and it's because you're never you're not going to get a sense of where you're going. Yeah. And that for for the the retention piece of like someone isn't just signing up, but they're actually reusing what you made. And, yes. And going back in. Exactly. And knowing, like you're not necessarily monitoring every like what they're cooking. Right. Right. It's just no. like that's kind of irrelevant. It's just are you using? Are you what using you, it? What we're making. Right. That's, that's important. Exactly, like for Adobe XD, I mean, you guys have incredible retention because mm -hmm. anyone working would need to open up your tool every single right. day. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna say something and I forgot. It'll come back. It'll come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll search recipes later in your Yes, mind. yes, we will. <laughs> oh, but um, I do remember, I was reading this great article about product market fit that was talking about a different way to measure it, mm. which is actually surveying your current audience and asking them, how like how disappointed they would be if they closed their product if if they shut down Ooh, yeah. um, so the people who you can res you can respond you know somewhat disappointed you know very disappointed or extremely disappointed or maybe it's not disappointed at all somewhat and extremely and the percentage of people who say extremely disappointed gives you a very good picture of your product market fit because these are people who can't live without your product. That's a, that is a great idea to do that. And yeah. just like kind of just think about the world without your product right. is sometimes a scary thought. Like to think yeah. about like, oh, what if, yeah, like for me, like right now, like what if uh, like Pinterest wasn't there or right? disappeared? Yeah. I have all of my catalogs in there. There you go. And I would lose them all and I wouldn't know what to do. Exactly. I mean, it, I, I, I wouldn't die, right? Like, <laughs> let's get real. Life would, <laughs> it would, but I, it would be difficult to like have to refine these things that like my daughter loves and oh like my, my God, wife yeah. loves. Like, like I've, I've done my diligence to like create different boards and right. that's like that's that's my way of using Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So I would I would be a little sad. Totally. Sure. I'm actually curious if anyone in the chat has other like web products that they can't live without. Mm -hmm. So if you do have some, shout yeah. them out. What are the things you use that, that you use every day that you don't even realize that you use? Yeah. Just like, it, think about it. Like, right. Someone said, we're shutting down tomorrow. You would be like, no, please. Yeah. 
Um, so anyway, this is our goal for the MVP. And then uh, we'll look at the MVP feature set. So we already went over a lot of this. Um, everything in blue is what we are going to be including in our MVP. So saving our SP, cataloging it, finding it, and viewing it. Um, there's two other elements on here that you will need for an MVP. One is account creation. So that's how, to, how does somebody get in here? You have to sign up. And then with sign up and account creation, you have to uh, go through a forget password flow. So that's kind of like, you know, um, a necessity. We're not going to do that together, yeah. but I want to point it out. Um, and the other is managing recipes. So how do you delete a recipe? How do you update a recipe? So those are, again, other elements of an MVP that you would need in order to yeah. get something And out. we got some responses. We got Ever, yeah, let's Evernote. Look. Evernote. Right. Okay, OneNote. I don't, I've never used OneNote. Medium. Medium's a good one. Until they started charging for it. And I was like, man. Do they? Yeah. You can only read like one or two a month or something. Oh. Uh, one, uh, OneDrive again, uh, or OneDrive is very similar to OneNote. Um, oh, notes, just notes in your um, mo like native oh. device, right? Like, like iOS notes? And this is, this is how we are, right? We're, we're, we're evolving as humans and we are extending our, our brains to technology mm -hmm. and using something like mm -hmm. Evernote. Like, I think Evernote was like the premier like, note-taking service and tool. Um, did a great job and I actually just love their logo. Uh, it's like a little the elephant because they never forget. Yeah, and that's that, nice. That's in YouTube, obviously, like what would we do without YouTube? Right, I, I would not cry. Well, no, 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 we watch Behance on YouTube, so right. that it's, I would cry. The, I would it's cry. Our, this is an artifact on yeah, YouTube afterwards, it is true. right? So, yes. I mean, uh, yeah, there's 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 things that like would disappear, you wouldn't necessarily like die. Right. But you'd definitely be affected. Right, yeah. I mean, if, if Google Docs went away, I would oh. die. <laughs> I have so much of my brain on Google Oh Docs. my God, yeah. So that's why I don't use Evernote or OneNote because I But those are I similar, use, right? Right, they're those very like, similar. Yeah. And that's kind of like where we are at this point. Like we have extended our consciousness to these other places to remember. Yes, exactly. And just like recipes. Yeah. And recipes, if not, are more important because this is a, a stamp of our cultural influence on the it world. It is. Right? This is how we connect to our culture and our humanity. It's through food. Food is the, the uniting. Like, just bread. 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 Making bread. Naan. Making a naan. Kacha. Any of that. Mm -hmm. Like, bread is part of like who we are as people. It is. In, in all cultures, we have bread. Um, I would just like to know, depending on your culture, what is the bread of your <laughs> culture? That is that's the, the new framing of our cooking show. Okay, let's do it. Breaking bread on Adobe Live. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> let's go. That was a really good pun. Yeah, thank you. Um, Dropbox, another essential service. Yep. Well, I don't use Dropbox either. I use Ooh, Google Drive. A Cornelian trying to trying to like trying to get, get yeah. in here. He wants XD. XD. Hey, you want you want to be a, a guest on on XD, Cornelian? Come on. Some so stuff. Sam Peterson, I I feel you. Every every I should really back everything on Google Docs. Everything you is you have is on there. At my whole life or my whole. Yes. Company is on Google Drive. And it's like, do you have a redundancy plan? Like, what's your what's your plan of like, where are you? Isn't like, everything on the cloud or something? Yeah. Is, shouldn't it just be saved? I don't want to have to think about it. Right. Just like oh. our memories. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Garlic cheese bread. From John, I like that. Now I'm getting hungry. I don't think we can talk about food anymore. Oh, sliced sandwich bread is is just a very very. Uh, Whoever was the the, the 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 hero that decided to like bake bread after bread was made to make toast is such a genius <laughs> idea. Like, let's get something that's cooked and cook it again. Right. And put some garlic on Just it. To make it crispy. <laughs> so how, what's, it. What's, what's going on with our managing recipes? Is that the okay. possible, so, that's the possible future? Um, managing recipes I think is something we'll probably want to consider for MVP. Like if you add a recipe but you don't want it, can you delete it? Um, mm. You know, can you go back in and update tags or update right. notes? So it's, it's just kind a of like function. yes, like necessarily a feature, yes, but a function of the features. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But it's it's all well. It's it's a feature because a developer is going to have to build that. They functionality. are totally right. Yeah. Right. And uh, Joshua, we are hung hungry as well. <laughs> we are definitely hungry. Yes, we have. Um, okay, so then we'll just quickly look at our post MVP because as we were saying before, it's really important to always have a holistic view of where the product is going in the end. 
Mm. So the goal of any product that wants to be successful and, and sustain is monetization. So um, how we would do this, so let's say we've we've proved that we have product market fit, we have tons of users on our platform, they're now you know upda updating recipes every day. Our first KPI for monetization would be user acquisition. Mm. So now it's, let's get more users. How can we get more users? So let's say, you know, initially we just tried word of mouth, maybe yeah. some low level marketing channels. Now how do you actually grow this exponentially? Um, so KPI for user acquisition, you'd be measuring that by the number of users we can acquire in order to grow our platform. The second KPI would then be revenue because you have to go to marketing partners possibly and say, we have X amount of people on our platform and you need to advertise with us because right. you will get amazing exposure. Yeah, and for those in the chat and watching, um, we're watching later on a rebroadcast, like this is like just a great lesson of like how to develop a lean product, yes. right? So like all of this scaffolding to what we're gonna be designing live in XD is super important to know and, and keep. Now you, the audience has this to refer to and to yeah, thank you for because for sure. this is something that like we, I, I was in school and we spent a whole semester learning this. Mm -hmm. And you know, this was like week, like 10 of our semester was yeah. learning how to actually evaluate our goals. Mm -hmm. um, so this is like, just like, thank you for like providing such hearty material for us to like go back to and be able to like re understand how to actually make a product yeah, properly, right? Definitely. So definitely. Yeah. My pleasure. Um, this is kind of, you know, once you do this a few times, this is the lens you look at any product through. This is a framework. Yeah, which is why I love working with startups mm -hmm. um, who are trying to craft this. Yes. And we can help them um, through our insights, talking to users and, you know, product, you know, market analysis, et cetera. And MVP, if you folks aren't aware of that acronym, acronym it's a... Mo uh, minimum Viable Product. So it's basically what is the absolute bare bones thing you need in order to ship a product that it can still um, have the like the functionality you need. Yes, not not most valuable player. No. Yes. Not most valuable player. Alexis is in the chat. She's my. Talk friend. about creative founders. Yeah. Hi, Alexis. Yeah, she's she's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, you're welcome. This is this is like something that I also like need a refresher sometimes. It's awesome. like, uh, creating a product is not easy. And no, it takes time. No, so, it's not. You. Yeah. Um, so we'll just take a quick look at some post MVP features so we can think about that when designing our, our information architecture. Mm -hmm. So sharing recipes. So if we think about that KPI for user acquisition, how do we get more users on here? sharing. Yes. So I'm going to be sharing my recipes with everyone I know and then they'll receive my recipes and then think, oh, maybe I should sign up for this cool tool right. too. Cool tool too. That's hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, so emailing, you know, enabling someone to email recipes, share them on social media um, in order to invite other users to the platform. And then we can think about how to actually build a community around this. Yeah. So this isn't just, you know, a repository for my own recipes. This can now be a network where we can see each other's recipes. Right. I think for me, a big part of uh, making recipes, even deciding to commit to a recipe, because it is a commitment, right? Yeah. Like it, it's time and the possibility of being very disappointed with a meal that you're very hyped up for, right? Mm -hmm. Like I've made some recipes without looking at comments. Oh, oh my God. Right? Comments are like, here's what I found. And sometimes technology talks to <laughs> spec, like that's great. Shut up, so, <laughs> uh, no, like comments, because sometimes it's like the comment right under the recipe is yeah. like, I used half the amount of salt. Yes, and it changed and it everything. Changed it. And, and yeah. I didn't read that and I'm like, I eat salty food. Too salty. I'm like, yeah. so sometimes those things are really crucial to kind of like remind the, the cook. Like what, what what can you maybe benefit from just like glancing at the chat? Mm -hmm. Building the chat to begin with is probably yes, a good idea. Yes, that is definitely Which something is we should think about in yeah. uh, our post and MVP. Norris coconut bread from Barbados. That sounds amazing. Stop, okay, we're, we're, <laughs> if you're gonna name foods, do it on your own time, because I'm getting hungry. I know, right? Andres, my designer. What's up? 
He says, I'm definitely gonna save this video or take a screenshot, really great info. Thank you, Andres, you're think, the best. I think what you, maybe um, uploading this to some sort of place where people can access it later too, like maybe sure. Behance uh, tutorial or, or something. I think, yeah. I think this is something that a lot of people um, don't always have a grip on mm -hmm. and do like to refer back to. And awesome. sometimes scrubbing through a video can be quite difficult. Yeah, um, yeah, that's so true. Maybe, maybe there's a possibility in the future to share it on um, your Behance page. Yeah, I can definitely do that. Cool. Yeah. No pressure. You know, yeah. I mean, this is just my two cents, but yeah. no, it's, great. it's from experience. Um, yeah, and then we can think about once we have this network, we can have sponsored recipes, sponsored collections. So. I mean, Chrissy Teigen I'm obsessed with right now because she oh, just yeah. has like the best recipes ever and I have all two of her cookbooks, but she could have her own sponsored page on here. Right. And then, you know, there's a lot of rep revenue opportunities. Yeah, totally. So, this can grow really and, well. And, and she's married to John Legend. The, I know. The sexiest I'm just man kind of, I'm just kind of obsessed with them yeah. as a family. Yeah, <laughs> but we don't have to go there. Um, awesome. So now that we have covered our whole product strategy, are you guys ready to do some designing? Yeah. I am. Let's do it. All right. So we are going to be designing the MVP, which involves saving, cataloging, finding recipes, and viewing them. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have a couple sketches here that I did, and I have a bunch of resources that I pulled. Let's see. Here's my sketches. Um, so I know they're really beautiful. So I want to, what I typically do is when designing an MVP, I like to um, kind of draft out the flow so I can see it holistically, like from one step to the next. And I do these really quickly. I wouldn't even call these low fidelity wireframes. I'd probably call these like skeleton wireframes. Mm. Um, so the first thing, let's actually label these pages. So let's take these guys, saving, cataloging, let's just take these and these and bring them down here so that we have a little framework. Okay, so this is gonna be safe, um, finding recipes. So this is like basically the first time, this isn't the first time experience, but this is gonna be how a user comes in to the product mm -hmm. and, and sees recipes. So imagine, um, you know, we have some kind of navigation Right? Um, we'll just make this like a dark color. And then uh, we know that we want to have a grid of recipes, right? So there's also gonna be a first time experience. I know I can use repeat grid with this, which I love. Um, repeat grid is amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed. Time saving. Yes, incredible. Streamlining it. Yeah. So the reason why I'm doing a grid is because recipes are really visual. Um, maybe if you have a ton of recipes, you might want to switch to a list view, but I think right off the bat, let's just um, make the visual aspect of recipes kind of the focal point when yes. you come in here. So remember, this is not uh, social yet. We can't share anything. This is just for ourselves, but we want to think about where it would go. So we always have maybe a logo here. You guys are really going to help have to help me with names later because I'm terrible with naming. Oh yeah, we got you. Um, and then maybe we have some kind of like up here, um, they'll have their user account settings. Oops, it's green. Um, and then, so we just, we're just kind of getting things in place right now. Mm -hmm. And then we know that we are gonna need to give them the affordance to search, right? So finding a recipe, keyword search, filter, and sort. Mm -hmm. So what is that gonna look like? Um, we're gonna have some kind of search. Um, we need a CTA here to add new recipes. And honestly, I mean, I really start super scrappy like this, um, just again, to get all the pieces out and see how this is gonna flow together. Yeah, it's already looking like something. Like, yeah. Just like that. And now we're just gonna go with this fun green color right now, because yeah. we don't wanna, oops, add new recipe. So from your homepage, you always wanna be able to do the, the main action, which is adding a new recipe. Um, and then, so we have our search, we have our grid of recipes. Let's just make this a little bit darker to give some differentiation. And then we need um, filtering and sorting. So I imagine filters right now will just be across the top. 
So we're gonna have a bunch of filters and we're gonna get to this in a minute. But right now we're just gonna do filter, 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 and then some kind of um, sort. So we'll do sort, sort by, and then that'll be a drop down. So this is kind of a just a really, really loose framework for mm -hmm. um, what you see when you come in here. Then, so there is gonna be an experience before this that we have to consider and keep in mind, which is the first time experience. So yep. when you just join, you signed up, you created an account, what do you see here? That is a problem that I will always have to solve right. for my clients, but I don't like to start there. Yeah. I like to start in the middle um, and think about what that final experience is right. and then scale back. I agree, and I think that sometimes you can get too caught up on that part, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of it is you start defining your language right. a little too early. Yep, and completely. And by, by creating the experience before, you're kind of just, the, the language is gonna develop itself, yeah. right? Your visual language will, will be what feature sets you've flushed out, mm -hmm. and the feeling of what your design is will kind of inform your language. Mm -hmm. and, and that is like, I think something that we also, that I learned early and I wish I would have learned earlier. Really? Is, is cause I, I feel like it seems so logical to start with the onboarding right. for the first time user. Sure. But at the same time, you've done yeah. it how many times, right? And you kind of have patterns that work well. Yeah. You can always go back to them. Totally. Just start with the features, get those built ASAP. Right, well, you, and you need to know what you're onboarding them onto. And if you don't have features designed, it's kind of hard to, to yeah. think about that. Yeah, that's totally to true. Totally agree. So we've basically gotten this, this set just laid out quickly. Looks so the great. next thing we'll do, it looks beautiful, right? Yeah. The next thing we're gonna do is um, uploading a recipe. Do I have that up here? Saving? Uploading. Saving recipe. Saving recipe. Yeah. Uploading so that's photo. this guy. Yeah. Okay. So all we're gonna do here right now, let's say we clicked on new recipe, add a new recipe. Um, we're just gonna give this a representation of a modal some kind of quick way to add a recipe. And we will come back to this one later as well. Whoops. Okay. Um, but we know that we're gonna have a CTA at the bottom to um, save, save recipe. So there's gonna be some kind of modal there. Right. All right, the next one is going to be um, cataloging a recipe. So this is what happens after you've saved it, after you've uploaded it. So mm -hmm. now it's in the system. Um, we can either drop the user back on the dashboard, but I think actually part of the next thing we should do is, is show them what the recipe looks like and give them the opportunity to catalog it because you're not gonna have much value in this tool if things aren't like tagged and saved. So let's imagine that we have our recipe over here and we will just make this a color. So it's, let's pretend it's an image. And then over here we have, um, let's let them name it. Name your recipe. And then we will do um, tags. They need mm. a ton of tags, so it's time to tag. Um, we won't do this right now again, but um, add tags. So we'll just make tags. Lots of tags. Right, because you, you have to be able to tag in multiple ways of, of assigning some sort of like, like I think it's like a, a, a light, like yeah, like taxonomy, like, and then thinking about like later on, maybe like some machine learning to, to save. And it's very light stuff, yeah. right? It's not like mm -hmm. some crazy like a de like detection of like analysis, but just, you need right. to be able to attach meaning. Yes, definitely. And so we're gonna let them name their recipe, add a bunch of tags, maybe add some notes, um, and then save it. Great, and then once they save it, I think they'll come back to this dashboard and they'll see it they'll see it saved, but maybe um, they'll have a modal here that just says recipe saved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now I think, so let's see, we've got 
cataloging recipe, we have um, saving a recipe, we have finding a recipe. So the last one is viewing. So for viewing a recipe, so let's imagine that we've just clicked on one of these tiles. Um, we've clicked on a card. What is it? What happens? What do we? What do we see next? Mm -hmm. So I imagine actually, I mean I want to see something kind of full screen. Um, I want kind of an immersive mm. experience so I can see the recipe. Yeah. Um, the visual, yeah. right? Because that's, the, that, that's the, the hard part about making people excited about food through a digital medium is like you can't smell it, right? right. You can't hear it cooking. Exactly. You can only see it. Right. But that's visceral enough to, for you to want to engage with it. So right. So making like a big takeover of some like great photography. Yeah. That's, a, that's an important feature. Love it. So now we'll see the tags um, that are there. We'll see any notes that we've written. So I'm just gonna represent notes with, whoops, um, just like straight lines. So I remember later to go in and, and show whatever notes are there. Mm -hmm. And then it would be kind of cool if we could also see related recipes. Oh yeah. Um, based on, so anything else that maybe shares a tag. Right. Um, so I say, oh, that's another chicken dish I could actually right, make right. tonight. The, either the protein yeah. or like the region or mm -hmm. like the flavor profile. Yeah. The pair, a pairing maybe, yeah. like you said. Like sometimes you're making a meat dish, a meal. but what what good vegetable dish I, would go with it? Like, I know. You know. Sometimes you don't want to make, like your, your first instinct may, might not be the best of like pairing sometimes, right? Totally, totally. To I always new... wish that recipes came with like mm -hmm. meal compliments. Right. Um, so maybe this is a maybe this is a full screen modal. Maybe this is a whole other page. I'm not really sure yet. We have mm. to think about what that interaction will feel like, and that's pretty much it. Oh, we didn't get to collection of recipes, so let's do that one. So let's imagine that we um, let's go back here. How I'm thinking the collection of recipes will work is basically on your dashboard, maybe instead of clicking on just one recipe, maybe there's a way to multi-select. Oh yeah. Um, so typically when I'm trying to figure out interactions, um, I'm always looking at references online. Okay. Um, because you're not, you're never reinventing the wheel. Everything, every interaction always exists and it should so that users know how to use something. True. Um, and so I was doing some research the other night and I saw that Envision had this kind of um, interaction. So you can select multiple and then down here, it's like um, uh, view as collection. Right, and so the idea to um, borrow patterns from completely different contextual experiences mm -hmm. um, can be applied to other experiences. Absolutely. Right? Like, like there's just a, talking about like an interaction, comparing the interaction experience from a, uh, a, a service like a design tool. Right. Right? Like that, yeah. I, I think that like a lot of what XD is doing is metaphors from other tools as well that Definitely. maybe not, weren't design tools, but were just, you know, like there, I know that like Flash, the early Flash system was like mm -hmm. a real big uh, inspiration for how XD is, and that was really? that wasn't necessarily like it was a creative tool. I don't know about a design tool uh -huh. because Flash wasn't very designy, right? <laughs> but it was <laughs> it was very very important. Yeah, totally. I and, mean, like I said, there's always another product out there that is using a similar interaction, and maybe there's a better way to do it. But maybe, that's fine though. Yeah, yeah, but you're using this as like just a mock up, mm -hmm. and then once you show this to a developer. Um, or, or stakeholders or some some other product manager in your team, maybe they could think of a different pattern that works with it. Exactly. That's more viable, um, but it's communicating the function. Yes, exactly. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out how they're going to view their collection of recipes. So again, when I'm when I'm cooking, um, I like to not leave my experience right. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to quickly switch around mm -hmm. without leaving the space. Right. So one thought is maybe there's a drawer that comes up from the oh, bottom yeah. Yeah. that yeah. has these little thumbnails. So this is the recipe I'm looking at right now. Like, and then I can I can just switch around. Like a spice rack? 
<laughs> I'm really into metaphors, sorry. You really are. <laughs> um, and there's a couple other ways that this, this could be done. Um, there is, you know, we could actually just rotate this. What's up, Jorge, from uh, another Colombian in the house? <gasps> Woo! Colombia is, is, is uh, heavy in this chat. Greetings from Colombia! I just think of the Sancocho that uh, I could be having that I don't have, but I will have, we'll have lunch. We're, we're lunch soon. Yes. Um, so maybe the drawer is actually on the side instead of the bottom. That could be something that we want to use ability test to right. see like what's more comfortable for people. Um, or it could be, maybe it's actually taking the tab metaphor. And so up on top here, you actually have different tabs. Mm. So, and hey, if anyone else has any other ideas or suggestions of how we could easily and quickly switch between different recipes, um, I am all ears. So, yeah, I, I do. I do like the tab, the tab function too. Like, you do. I mean, I, I I'm I could go for a, a drawer that kind of slides in and out. Mm -hmm. um, I do like. I think I think actually it's really smart to to think about design tools um, as a way to um, kind of give you a, a hint of some pattern usage. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of times, like there are a lot of functions. Like if you look at like just like, the XD interface itself, like. If you look at the design prototype share, yeah, and I don't know if you've noticed that that share is brand new. Uh, mm -hmm. That's so post max feature. Just holler at holler at these new feature updates. Amazing. Um, these are ways to switch in between modes, right? So it's sort of like a tabs experience, it is, right? Completely. Um, so there's there's different ways to, um, and I noticed that like you you probably ha might have uh, you you might have other um, parts of your experience that are similar, and and being able to differentiate like what this is versus what that is is important. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, the t I think all of these could work, and when it comes down to it, like what is it? What tests better, right? Right. Yeah, and sometimes you know, I I remember in another chat you guys were talking about A/B testing. Mm -hmm. This is not something that I would recommend A/B testing because we're not looking. A/B testing is like when you're actually looking for a specific mm -hmm. outcome, like a a winner. Right. Um, this would be more, I think, if I were going to test this. I'd probably do um, unmoderated usability testing. Right. And um, I've used usertesting.com before, which is mm. a great resource if you work for an enterprise company that can pay for it. Right. Um, and I would probably just ask maybe, I'm trying to think, if we're gonna test three different versions, I'd probably ask like 20 people mm -hmm. um, and see which one people vote for more. Yeah. Um, which would be a good way to just see what's, can see what's working. Get a consensus. Yeah, right? get a consensus. And if it's if you find that like maybe one of them just didn't test well at all, then redo a test, right? right? I mean, yeah, it might cost you a little bit more upfront to do testing, yep. but at the end, like if you build something wrong and you didn't test it, then you have to rebuild it. That's more expensive. Yeah, completely. So, so like kind of like uh, you know thinking about uh, just making that investment ahead of time. Totally, totally. The delayed gratification, if you will. Right. Exactly. So. You guys, right now we have um, skeletoned out our MVP flow. Just like that. Just like that. I mean, we don't have user settings and we don't have a blank state for the first time experience. It's okay. Um, but this is... this is the crux of the the product that we're going to be building. And you have not only uh, uh, the bones, the skeleton, but you also have a different version of, 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 mm -hmm. a, of an experience and an interaction. Yeah. So that's that's crucial to like think about like oh I have iterations already. Right. Just from and and how quick XD allows you to do that. Right? Yes. Yes. And, and then thinking about like even wiring it up later, it gets even faster when yes. you want to show it to somebody. Definitely. Definitely. So what I'm going to do now is just give these the next layer of fidelity and work through some of the interactions that we're going to need. So for example, um, we can look at this first screen right now and think about how the ta how the um, filters are going to behave. So mm -hmm. filters are going to result in tags that are going to com come across the top here. So I want to figure out how that works. I also want to figure out, is this the right um, structure for our product? So right now I have a tab across the top or a navigation across the top. If we were going to think about where this would, how this would grow when we expand to have a community, and it's not just my recipes, but I can explore others as well. Maybe this is, you know, 
your recipes and then um, explore recipes. So just knowing that this kind of structure can uh, grow as our product development grows. Um, the other way I was thinking about this was actually vertical navigation. And I just kind of like to explore both sometimes to see, you know, naturally, I think it's so easy to go to a top navigation. Um, but I don't know, sometimes a vertical navigation is, is kind of nice and it gives you a lot more height. Right. Um, so. And this is where I feel like I'm, I'm seeing a lot of your software design yeah. come, come, into, come into play. Cause like a lot What's of these that? patterns um, can be really um, heavily used by software that you might see out there. So mm -hmm. um, whether it's like a CRM, uh, different types of um, just like kind of analytical tools that maybe mm -hmm. businesses might be using, like a construction company or whatever it might be. Um, there are a lot of ways that the real estate of the screen is more, um, using that left panel is a lot more effective sometimes, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, you bring up a good point. I actually, product management, project management tools have gotten so robust with, you know, Jira, um, yeah. Monday, Asana. There's, There's so, so many, many. and I, I love using them because they have so many interesting interactions. Because they're so complex and yeah. they have to. They, they have, have to, to be able to do a lot of things at once on the at the drop of a dime. Exactly. And that's the whole thing about the intuition part is, um, and sometimes that left navigation is more is, intuitive. Right. XD, look at XD. Yeah, XD has it. Um, actually, um, Adobe Stock has it too. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, there's two ways we can do it too. Uh, we can either actually have all of our filters on the side. Um, and so we're really just using this space for um, the content itself. Mm -hmm. um, or we can just have the navigation on the side. So in this sense, then we wouldn't, this grid would not be expanding. Everything would just sit here. Maybe more, like that. more space. Yeah, exactly. So maybe this comes in and out. Yeah, and maybe you can like have a, a, a way to make the images bigger or smaller if you wanted to. Like, yeah. you, know, you have those, that option. And I think by doing this, you also free up more real estate to have some of that functionality. Mm hmm. Definitely. So again, there's almost three ways we can do this. This mm -hmm. is what I would call maybe traditional. Yeah. Um, and then this is could be a drawer that comes out on the side, or it's just that our nav is on the side and we still have our filters across the top. I Beautiful. want the filters to be really accessible because the filters is um, the heart of, of this product it because it's, it's about the recipe discovery. Yeah, that, totally. So I'm curious if anyone in the chat has a preference. Yeah, take a look. So maybe zoom out a little bit so we can see the, the three um, different options. Uh, I think uh, if you have it designed or have been had trouble designing a, a, an experience like this where you just have like a filter system with different um, content that needs to be like fished through. Um, how do you how do you prefer seeing it? Do you like that uh, horizontal uh, system? Do you mm -hmm. like the the navigation on the left panel? There's they're very they're they're very similar. Yeah, they are. And they do all do the same thing, but exactly. it's just a matter of preference. I think so. If it's a matter of preference. I mean, that's kind of where my mind goes. Is it utility and usability or is it just preference? Right, that's true. Um, it might not just be preference. Right. Maybe it actually is deeper than that. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I was trying to figure out. Um, and, but te and testing would reveal something like this, right? Testing would, yeah. Although I have a feeling if I just tested this traditional one, it might be fine. Yeah. Um, I think it's, so maybe it is visual. And something that I love about um, people who are maybe just UI designers who are like specialized in UI design. I love when I can give a traditional wireframe like this to somebody and they can reimagine it in a different way. Right. Um, and maybe do this vertical transition, you know, without without even indicating it if it were a purely visual decision. Yeah. Erica says she likes a traditional, but you also like the side nav. Would the labels for the icons on the side nav pop out on hover or something? Labels for the icons. Right, so the, the tags, like would they, if like oh. hover to reveal or couldn't you collapse? Yeah, so that's a great question. I actually pulled a couple references for you guys. So Monday, 
um, I was just using before. And they have a really cool way. Uh, so they have this vertical nav, and then they have this little arrow mm. that pops out. But I don't know, so I really like this interaction, but I don't know if this would be intuitive enough. Right. And also, thinking about like how your users are, are, are using this. Like, are they using a computer while they're cooking, or are they using an iPad? Right, right? yes. So, so thinking about those um, interactions on the de device-specific um, Definitely. And, and, and later on thinking maybe it's not mobile ready yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's like a V2 kind of integration. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like thinking about how users are going to be interacting yeah. with your product. Yeah. I mean, across across different platforms yeah. is a huge consideration. We have some more opinions. We do. People like the left filter menu, um, bottom version with the left side menu. See, it's all over the place. I know. This is the great. This is a great discovery piece for everybody watching and, and contributing. Is this kind of sounds like a preference? It does. But at the same time, maybe it is deeper. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm th I'm seeing a trend. Andres likes the third one. This mm -hmm. one, I guess. I'm seeing a trend towards people liking at the left nav. Uh, the left nav. Traditionally, makes me feel in intimidating looking for an electronic part of a computer store. Hugo says, well, that's also maybe because mm -hmm. this is, yeah, I mean, that's true. This is very e-commerce too. It does. So you guys, let's go wild. Let's just, let's just explore what a vertical navigation could be let's like. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's commit to that. Let's commit. That's great. And okay. I, I also think anchoring it on the left side just feels like more pleasing to my eye. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, and wh whatever color it ends up, it might not be black, right? But like. Right. And, and that's, it just feels like, like from thinking of, uh, of just the, the like gestalt of mm -hmm. it. And sorry to use such a like, you know, word that is very, very like snooty. Right. Um, <laughs> but I just think like this, like just the, the design of it, as far as like, like anchoring your eyes to a grid. Um, right. It just feels good. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, Yes, I was gonna say something again, and and, and yep. it escaped me. But I think I like this version, and I think I want to try the filters across the top still because, yeah. again, I don't want people to have to hunt for them. I want it to be really easy to find and use. So let's try that one. Ooh, Ricardo. Ricardo from Italy it. prefers the third one too. All right, guys, let's go with it. Do it. Okay, so the next thing I want to think about is the drop downs of these filters and how the tags appear. So. I'm a very, I can be very messy when I design. Like I, mm. I'm a screenshot hoarder. Do you um, junk drawers? Do you have junk drawers in your house? Well, I just Marie Kondoed my whole house. Oh, so, nice. So um, no more. Sparking <laughs> joy all over your house, huh? It is, except I keep changing the positioning it's of okay. like our Tupperware drawer and things like that and drive my fiance crazy. My goal in life is to have zero junk drawers. Right now I have one. Really? One, just one. It I is. mean, that's pretty good. It's okay. That's pretty good. I'll get around to it. Yeah. So let's think about this for a second. All right, so this is actually, sorry guys, I'm kind of going all, all over my artboard here, but I did save um, a list of, doo doo doo, I saved a list of all of my uh, filters somewhere. I don't know where I went, but let's look at some, um, references anyway for this. So what we want, wow, did I really, where did it go? Okay, we'll find it later. So let's take a look at some of the ways that other sites handle um, filters and drop downs and tags, because um, that's what we're gonna be doing right now. Mm. So I pulled a bunch of screenshots Actually, I thought this was interesting because Adobe Stock um, has a left side panel for their filters, mm -hmm. and here is where you guys show your tags. Yeah, it's very so, similar. Yeah, it is. Um, Epicurious, I definitely wanted to reference since it's a recipe tool, although it does not allow you to just upload a photo, so mm -hmm. they we already have a competitive advantage against them. Mm -hmm. um, they have their filters across the top here, and then what they do, so I like how they have the tags up here. Mm -hmm. um, but what they do is they condense the filters and then show a, a more. Mm -hmm. And then the more filters becomes pretty overwhelming. However, it's also robust. Right. So um, it's also a question of 
of how robust we want to get with this. Um, but I think let's just let's just for our purposes go with a traditional traditional drop down. Yeah. So let's say this one would be meal type. Um, it's very hard to like pick generic colors. Oh. Um, <laughs> the grayscale. Yeah. Or my like bluish grayscale. All right, so let's say this one is cuisine. So then we have our little arrow. I think I actually had some tag save drop down category. Yay. That. All right, so I have some carrots. All right, so let's see this one's meal type. So then we wanna drop down and show them all the different kinds of meal type, and it's gonna be checkbox, so they can select multiple. Mm -hmm. So we will not just- Not radio buttons. Not radio buttons, because that's select one. Right, wrong interaction. Right. Drop down, is this it? Ah, oh, I already have. Look at that. Look at that, I did some homework. Um, and this is meal type. All right, so let's say that they just selected um, one of these, and then, what happens next? What do they What do they see? We want to be able to see that the tag is appearing. Mm -hmm. So let's yeah, move. You need to have. You need to satisfy their interaction with, with something that's happening on screen. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Their affordance so, needs to be paid off. Right. So let's say they click the tag, um, or they click the thing, and then we have a tag that shows up. Oops, it's breakfast. We'll just fix that. Breakfast for dinner? I guess so. <laughs> um, we're doing really scrappy that's here. That's good. But that's fine. So you also need an X because if you don't, if you want, you want to easily be able to say, no, I don't want breakfast. I don't like what's coming up for that. So I did find a plugin that was pretty cool. And I love how you can just do plugins like right here. Oh, the panel. <laughs> it's so easy. Yeah, I know. Um, so close. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the plugins yeah. and the panel. Yeah, the panel's awesome. And just, just to kind of give you a sense of time, a minute and a half, mm -hmm. roughly, until we have our design feedback. Awesome. And so that's um, analyzing some of the designs that everyone's created for the challenge. Amazing. And then we'll come back to your work. Great, later. sounds good. I'm very excited to see the designs. This is coming along great. Yeah, I mean it's it's super scrappy, but I like to I like to get out all the interactions first, and, and then think about uh, doing it live is interesting, right? It is. <laughs> I literally thought I was going to like have everything finished today, no, and I was like, "What am I going to do tomorrow?" <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll have we'll have it all done. <laughs> yeah, and seriously. And this is the whole process of design and and changing the paradigm of designing in front of an audience. This is like a microcosm of what the, the uh, collaborative design is like now. Mm -hmm. Because your whole team could be could see you designing now. Right. Think about that. Like, it is pretty crazy. Like a lot of times designers just silo themselves in some sort of hole and, and come up with some crazy stuff, sometimes great stuff, but a lot of times people don't know what they're making until they make it. And oh, then, I know. And it's like now we can see what you're doing. Yeah. And that's I think that's a great thing for the, the world of design. I think I, I, I like the transparency of it. I... I had um, explored, I had experience using a collaborative design tool and I'm so happy that XD is now collaborative because it blew my mind being yep. able to collaborate with my designer and just in real time. Um, it's it's, it's so a, cool. It's such a cool thing so to So freaking cool. So I'm very excited that you guys have that feature now. Me too. Um, it looks like we have nine seconds. Yeah, so we'll we'll take a pause and okay. we'll we'll come back and if you if you want to kind of do some things, you yeah. feel free to do that. Um, we have some design feedback to share with y'all. So, um, hopping over to my screen and our Discord channel, um, you are all welcome to come in and view some of these uh, channels that we have for you. Um, just a wealth of information from some really really Im important, in my eyes, um, designers here at XD, um, people like Howard Pinsky himself, um, contributor. Um, so there's just tons of, 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 of really great resources. And this is where, um, if we look at the, the current challenge on our, um, on our Discord page, we have our, 
our stuff. So let's look. Let's look at some of these. Awesome. Oh, let's, this one is a screenshot, so it's kind of small. And let's let's take a look at what what we're actually. Um, so, um, asset management. So, designing landing page for a health food website. As you design, try to publish, uh, try to create components and link the assets. So you're kind of using some of the functions of the Creative Cloud, um, and we might see some emoji reactions. Let's nice. cross our fingers. And if not, we'll see this tomorrow. Okay. Um, so the first one is a page um, for health food, um, kind of related to what you got going on. Yeah. Right. So, um, thinking about your product, mm -hmm. it might need a splash page or a landing page later on. Definitely. Um, and um, I, I think the the at least the layout for me does do great things. I want to hear what you think about this design. I I really love where it brings your eye. So this the green shape in the beginning, you know, it brings my eye from left to right, and then my eye goes back down to the green at the bottom. So I really like the way you're guiding the eye in that way. Um, I think it feels really bright, happy, and clean. Mm -hmm. Maybe the um, header could be just a little bit bigger to yeah. give some hierarchy on the page, but um, it's definitely conveying the feeling of clean, healthy food. And it's it's straightforward. I, for me, like I, I tend to go to how horrible my eyes are, <laughs> and, and when I see fresh, like it kind of disappears with the green. Um, so thinking about the, the the contrast that you're using for mm, fresh, yeah, um, to make it pop more, um, a little hard to see. Um, also, the the typeface and the microcopy is a little small. Um, but also, what do you think about people using like all lowercase these days with their um, CTAs and with some of their work? I don't mind it, but I think it needs to be intentional. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually. I don't know if I've really no seen a lot of all lowercase CTAs before. Yeah, it's. I think it's a trend that I've been seeing. Um, love the cards; uh, they're really helpful. Yeah. Maybe um, a little drop shadow play with that to get some definition around this one. This mm -hmm. one seems to be disappearing, um, but really uh, overall, like we, great communication. Um, and thank you for submitting. Yeah. Um, and we have um, w this one. This was the. Let's see. This Who? What? Where? Let's get it. Let's get this one. Who? Where? What? Who wear what? The who wear what app? I love when people name their their mm -hmm. projects. This is also really fun. So um, this is online marketplace that helps users and sell locally. Okay, so this is a little different from the ones that we were looking at. So let me see if I can get something that's more relevant to what we were talking about. Oh, here. okay. Um, messaging app. This is today, so this is a messaging app. Oh, this is a food one. Let's Ooh. get this one. This is asset management. This is really related to you and what you might be making here. Oh my god. So overall, loving the color, loving the photography, uh, and really clear as far as um, where we are as far as what we're eating, right? And these are ingredients and health care, health, health values. Yeah. What do you think about this one? Um, just one screen. I really... I like it. I like the color. The color actually brings out some of the elements in the imagery. Yeah. I do wonder, you know, you'd have to control that. Mm -hmm. um, so if this were a system, can any image be in there? And, right. and you have to update the colors accordingly. But these colors complement each other really well. And my mind's going to interactions here. Mm -hmm. Whereas like if I select um, this one, what would happen, right? That that would be something, and That's if you cool. for the designer yeah. um, of this, who, what, what name do we have? Um, uh, I'm, my eyes are bad. <laughs> Aaliyah, um, yeah, push this further because I think this is great, and and if you can prototype how this would work with auto animate to like what mm -hmm. would be the transition interaction between this option and this option, and how would those healthcare benefits change? Um, just really good work. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I like that. What else we got? I think some of these might not be relevant, but let's look at this one. Mm. This was today, so you haven't seen this. If you um, and sometimes I love it when people prepare videos because this is also really cool. So interactive prototype nice. for messaging. So this is all done in XD with auto animate. That's awesome. So really great job at pushing some of these interactions. <gasps> oh, oh, look, look at, the at that. Oh, this is the emoji yeah. one. Yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. That's a really quick turnaround too. Great, great work there. Um, Limons, Limonis. 
I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, really, really like the the simplicity of the of the design. Um, I know messaging apps are kind of abundant, and mm -hmm. we have patterns that are so easily used these days. Like we yeah. we have WhatsApp, we have F Facebook Messenger, so many messaging centers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but like I think overall it looks different and clean. Um, and the way that you're able to like scroll through interactions, really great. I love the presentation too with the bl the white and the blue. Mm -hmm. um, it's really beautiful. Blue is uh, just a very very great color to use for accessibility. Yeah. Um, it's, oh, is it? Yeah. So blue is the the one color in in our uh, interface design that is not does not exclude color blindness. No way. So if you use like greens and reds, those can um, change into a muddy brown or other other uh -huh. t depending on the type of uh, color blindness you have, mm -hmm. uh, but blue is uh, relatively going to stay blue. It may be a different value of blue, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, that's I think why a lot of brands use blue nice. in the tech world. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's some really really great work. I I can't wait to see what more uh, you post later. Actually, let's take a look at one more. Let's take a look at this um, this challenge. Focus on new trigger functionality. Uh, this is from earlier in the week. Wireframes. Oh, look at that. Mockups. Oh. Did a whole story. This looks like a case study. <gasps> and there it's is really a is. little video. Look at that. And using uh, the drag feature in XD as a trigger for your interactions can easily be done. That's awesome. Um, that auto animate. Great work. Thank you for preparing these videos. These are always really cool to see. Yeah. Um, and for the audience out there, um, you can always like look at these. Um, uh, these contributors Behance pages because um, they're all there. So thank you, uh, Dan Lee, for submitting uh, who where who hair what who, who wear what. what. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is where you'd want to uh, submit your uh, designs for feedback. Um, we're gonna we're gonna head back to your screen in a second, but okay. let me show one thing real quick. Um, I'm not. Not sure how many of you know, but um, Pinsky, Howard Pinsky did, uh, created this really, really helpful um, um, XD kit for states. So if you haven't yet, go to our Behance page and just search for component states UI kit for Adobe XD, and you will get a really, really cool um, tool or a kit that you can just save in, into your uh, into your files and you have different states that you can play with. So um, if you wanted to like, uh, oh, like wow. have, you have your states here. So you have trigger states That's awesome. um, that are all kind of like defined for you. Um, and to give you some like helpful uh, like fodder to create your own experiences, um, this is just a really, really uh, great kit that you can use um, and just play around with it. Um, completely free and, and for you to download. Um, I, I just got it from Behance myself. So if you want to learn a little bit more about that. Also, um, for you, for all of you in the chat, um, take, our, take our survey. It's live now at the top of your chat screen. Um, and just fill out the quick survey. It doesn't take very long. I did it myself this morning. It's really quick, really easy. Um, and you could win a year of Creative Cloud, which is a huge value. And That's you get amazing. access to all of our apps. Um, not only do you get XD, um, you, and you can uh, then publish as many of these uh, shared links to your to your friends and teams, uh, but then you can also have Photoshop and my favorite, all time favorite, Illustrator. I near and dear to my heart. That's where I learned how to design. Um, Illustrator is my favorite thing. That's in the where world. I learned how to I design. I love XD. Don't get me wrong, but Illustrator is my uh, my number one bay. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're hopping over back to your screen, Rosina, and awesome. we're gonna. Take okay. a look at what we got going on. All right, so we're gonna get back to design in a second, but in the meantime, I need major help from you guys, please. I am terrible with naming. We have to give this thing a name. The best one I've got right now is what's for dinner, but I don't think that will sell well. So while I start designing, please help me with some names. Anything you, you can possibly think of we'll add here and maybe vote on them later. Yes. So the <laughs> the idea and inspiration is is accept, like accessing your dinner recipes, like just kind of pun be punny. Yeah. Right? Anything that you can think of, not not too on the nose. Sometimes it can like brand names can get like that. Mm -hmm. Not too long. Right. It has, but it should evoke food, and it should evoke, I don't know, 
Yeah. Your naming your is, recipes. Naming is hard. Yeah. Naming is. Oh I, my gosh. Yeah. I, I just I had a I don't know I telling you I just had a, a child recently and, yeah and uh, I had to name her. <laughs> what did her What did you name her? I named her Frankie. Really? Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Why not? How do you right? spell it? Uh, F R A N K I E. Oh, that's adorable. Frankie June. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I love it. June, even though she's born in uh, November. That's okay. Yeah, she's my little June bug. <laughs> Naming is hard though. That's awesome. Naming is really I, hard. I will How did you, you guys? Also. Thank you. How did you guys come up with that name? Um, my my wife's uh, name is uh, a little unorthodox. It's okay. Franchuk. Okay. And so it's uh, kind of a um, play on her name and her nickname as a kid was nice. Frankie. So I love that. She And now everyone just calls her Fran, so it's like throwback. Yeah. That's so cute. Plus I, I just think it's, it's like fun to name, uh, break the stereotype and name uh, a girl a boy's name. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That's not a boy's name. What, and you have another daughter? I do, yeah, that's, that's who I cook for mainly. That, nice. I need you yeah. to make this <laughs> so I can have actually like, that would, that's something that, that I've gotten my my four year old. Um, I'm going to talk about my four year old. Sorry, um, is but she is she is really a, a, a I think a good eater, picky. but she just eats really slow. She she's not too picky, mm -hmm. but she just takes forever to eat. And but the more uh, the the better I make food, the faster she eats it. So um, for me. My struggle is just like, what am I going to cook for her? I don't even worry about myself anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what am I going to cook for her? And yeah. what do you cook for your kids? Anybody in the chat have kids that they struggle to cook for? Um, because for me, that's like my number one yeah. priority every day. I hear it. Well, I, I mean, I don't because I don't have kids, but, but I've you, heard you that. It. You know, yeah. yeah. You were once a child. <laughs> we all have experience with children. I hear the kids are really picky eaters. Yeah, she, she's a, uh, but she definitely uh, will eat mac and cheese every day if I let her. With, with just like bro I mean, broccoli, yeah, sure. Who Why wouldn't? Not? I want to eat mac and cheese every day, but my uh, doctor doesn't recommend that. I would so eat mac and cheese every day if I like could. Like mac and cheese with some like breadcrumbs on top, a little bit toasted. Oh my God, stop it. I know, I talk, talk about food again. <laughs> Ooh, we have two um, naming ideas, pot kit. Pot kit. And noms. I like noms. I like it, I'm adding them. We're gonna vote on them before the end of the day so I can make a logo tonight. Noms and food it. Marinate. Marinate, yeah. Okay, I like noms. We got, we got four. Nice. So we have, uh, ooh, mun, I don't know what that is, but it sounds interesting, munskin. Hmm. Um, I, I really like food it, that's, that's fun. Food it, one word. Food it, one word. Oh, not food. Um, I like marinate. Yeah, I like the way good. Nam's looks, but it also looks like that new diet thing. Not. Nah. There's a new diet that's like new no or I don't mm. know. There's so many new diets yeah, out there. Yeah, there are. There always are. My Nam's. Yeah. My Nam's. Bone appetite. That's well, cute. Like, well, like well, like well fed. I don't know. No. Well fed. Well fed. <laughs> I'll put it on there. Um, you can you, you can keep contributing these yeah, names, please, by the way. Please, please. Inums? Inums? What is that? I don't know. Well, you know, like you could just make a new word. Yeah, I know. It's you know? true. Companies do that these days. Pinterest did that, right? Yeah. Google. Yeah, it's true. Like, there's nothing wrong with making new names. Um... Autocorrect wants to keep correcting me. Maybe he meant inoms. Maybe that was a typo. Maybe. I don't know. It's a new word. You can make the rules. So just to um, show you guys what I'm doing right now, for the modal, to add new recipes. So we want to give them three different ways to add a recipe. Um, uploading a photo, entering a URL, and manually entering a text. So yeah. you could do this in many different ways. Um, we could treat them all equally in this experience and, and let the user just kind of choose their own path. But I have a hunch that uploading a photo might be the um, the path most frequently taken. Right. So I want to make that a lot larger and then um, entering a URL and manually entering text um, 
to make those kind of secondary. So this was this is my approach. And then actually what we would do in development is we'd be measuring how many people are uploading a photo versus entering a URL versus randomly entering text. And then we would um, optimize if we learned that the numbers were skewed differently. Yeah, that makes total sense. And yeah. that you can like, create that hierarchy after you get that right. feedback. Right, right, exactly. So, you know, we can release with this. It's not gonna be the end of the world if somebody, you know, has to click a smaller button. Um, but even here, I, I wanna de decrease the amount of steps. So, I would love for somebody to just be able to drag or upload a, a photo right from here. Um, and the same with the URL. So let's say you click this. Maybe this just changes. Um, to a text field mm -hmm. um, with some kind of CTA, like save. Right. And, you know, for this, because I'm, I'm always talking about how I look at other sites for inspiration, right? So with this particular experience, I actually was trying to think about other sites that let you add content uh, through different avenues. Mm -hmm. Right. And one that I found, um, ironically, was Pinterest. And so... They, I mean, they're, they've gotten really good at this, right? They have, yeah. But And, and why shouldn't we be looking to the tech, the right. product giants? They're dominant. Right. So um, this was really interesting to me. They actually let you add the photo and add your title mm. and talk about it all in one experience. Right. Um, but you can either drag and drop or save from site. Right. And I think this guy turns into a URL, which made me think about not making them go through so many different paths, but just enabling them to do it all totally. in one experience. I think that's such a better experience than like having some sort of wizard. Yeah. Right, like yeah. step by step by step. Right. It just seems kind of brute force. Right, because I want this to be quick. This isn't like something that I want people to sit down and go through their recipes and add yeah. them all. It's like snap, add it, tag right. it, right. you're done. Right. Any more naming? You got great a great compliment. What did I get? So someone Cornelian is going to be watching this multiple times. Sweet. I think I, I agree that like there's a lot of great information in in what you shared today. Thank you. And just for people that are just eager to be designers, like you need some sort of framework because mm -hmm. just going out there and entering. What, creating wireframes from scratch, like just from your head, totally is, is sometimes counterintuitive. Yeah, or it is counter. It's not even recommended. Right. Well, there's also a different approach between you know building a website for like you know a restaurant or a hair salon or something versus building a product where you have to think about each feature and weigh the pros and cons of of yeah of the of the cost of of building it. I would like to zoom out of your screen to see exactly like how much you've done in this little time. Because I think I think it's pretty impressive. Well, I mean, look at that. <laughs> look at all that. Well, these are references I pulled earlier, but um, it's been yeah, we've had a very productive morning, I think. Yeah. Although I'm blown away with how little I've gotten done compared to what I thought I was going to do, but well, that's you know, all good. It's all good. I'll take the, I'll take the blame for that because I was talking to you because <laughs> you're just fun to talk to. So the next thing I want to do is look at the tagging. Um, so the way I want to structure tagging is I want to have a category header. So we'll call this meal type. And then I want to have different tags underneath. But I also want people to be able to add their own tags because, again, this has to be flexible. Um, so let's say this is, well, actually, let's just pull our tags out because we have some. My components, I take my tags. So I still need to add an X there. Pretend there's an X there. So mm -hmm. we have different um, tags for different sections, right? And again, this is wireframing. We're super scrappy with this because I just want to nail the functionality. Um, so pretend this is a different, different section. So let's say we um, want to select breakfast, right? Or let's say it's dinner. Okay, so this is what it would look like. So basically, all of the tags would be exposed is what I'm thinking. And then you would just select the ones that pertain to this particular recipe. Um, but you also, I want people to be able to add their own tags. So for every single section, um, 
you want there to be an affordance to add a tag. And then it's like, what happens when you click on that plus sign? So let's say you click on that plus sign and maybe there is a little text field that opens up here mm -hmm. where you can just type in a custom tag and save it. Uh, that's one way to do it. I'm not convinced that it's the best way, but it's just kind of how my brain is working right now. Right. So this is one way to create tags. Um, the other thought is, well, do we want people to also create categories? I would, I would say no. The reason I would say no is because I think as product designers, you need to have, there are some times where you can't just give everybody every affordance they want. Right. You have to enforce a little bit of structure. And if it doesn't provide too much user value, then you need, then it's not necessarily right. worth doing. I agree. It's it's kind of just like providing some constraints to, yes. to the user. Exactly. It's because like, they can kind of get lost sometimes yeah. too. And it could break our whole taxonomy if someone were to, you know, add, because look, if you add a different section, then you have to add a different filter on right. the first page. And then it's just kind of breaking down the construct that we're creating. So you always want to think about user value, but also about, um, I guess, product structure. Right. So uh, we have a couple minutes left here. Do we want to maybe like look at our plan that we had today and, and do an overview of what we did? Sure. Um, and, and as long as uh, like your, your day one kind of uh, idea of, of what we had planned and what we plan on doing tomorrow so folks can be inspired to come back. Because yes. this is the idea is we want you to come back. We want to measure our success today. Yes. By you coming back tomorrow um, to see what we can do. So we got the wireframe of the MVP. Yeah. Pretty much done. Yes, right? wireframe is done. So let's clear out a lot of this annoying stuff. Um, wireframes are done. I think we've settled on a nice structure mm -hmm. for our first page. We have iterations that we, we can have always iterations. Go back to. Yep. And let's get this out of the way. Let's just update these initial wireframes. Um, and this one was updated, right? Nope. And this one, okay, so we've gotten pretty much done. So let's take a look at what we wanted to do. We wanted to, well, <laughs> we talked about our target audience. We talked oh, about yeah. our user stories and flows, the feature alignment, um, wireframing. We did not get to prototyping. Um, and tomorrow we will definitely be doing some really fun designs and prototyping. Yeah. I would love to be able to prototype this MVP experience um, with full designs um, and just see how it all flows together. So yeah, that, again, we're gonna we're gonna come back tomorrow and I will actually be helping you with the prototyping. Yes, you will surprise, be. Surprise, surprise. So we're gonna be able to uh, demonstrate how it looks like to share a document and I can actually wire things up for you while mm -hmm. you uh, put some finishing touches on the polish. That would be your, amazing. And we'll get ready for some testing possibly. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so thank you again, Rosino, for, for coming in for, and just awing us Thanks with all this information. Me. And everybody, please come back tomorrow. We'll chat and win again. Make sure to take that survey and submit your design challenges and tune in tomorrow for all the other exciting programs we have. Yeah, you guys have to come back and see how this is, is taking shape. And I want some food recipes from recipes. you or inspiration so we, we can- got potential logos cooking up. Yeah, I really like some of the ideas that Norris has over here. Dinner hub, recipe access. Yeah. Time. For the love of food. Time. These are really good. Yeah. Yeah, so also just come back to see what name yeah. Rosinas chose. Yeah. Because those are some really great options out yeah. there. Yeah. What else we got? So yeah, the survey. Hop on the survey. So you get a year of Creative Cloud. That is a huge amount of access and creativity that you can explore. Um, there's tons of great tools that are coming out too. So um, just be uh, just be on that and, and come back. We want you. We come want, back. We, we want to cook for you too. Breaking bread. <laughs> right? That might be oh, it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you guys.
Thank you.